All right, back again. Now this time, since I've recently cleaned my FNP45, um, and I haven't really carried it, there's no reason to really clean it. So I'm mostly just going to take it apart to show all the internals of the uh, of the firearm. Now, you'll have to pardon me with the creaking chair until I get a new one. It's going to creak. So I'm going to start with the holster that I have. Now my holster, I had custom made for my uh, for my FMP45. And the reason I had it custom made was I wanted to be able to leave the light uh, and laser on it while carrying it. I didn't want to have to take it off every time. I also wanted to point out, because I do carry extra ammunition, I, um, these magazines were actually originally made for Glocks. However, I found that my uh, FMP45 magazines fit in them perfectly. So if you have one you're looking for a uh, mag holster, Glock mag holsters will work. Uh, these ones are actually particularly interesting because since I carry them, the ammunition, sideways. And the reason I carry it like this is it gets it more out of the way and I can pretty much forget about it being there. The reason what makes the other one special is the other one I got specifically because it's designed to face the other way. For obvious reasons, pointing the ammunition in the same direction does not work. Now then, as before, the first step in this is going to be unloading the firearm. So of course, you know, finger off to trigger. And this firearm here has a ambidextrous magazine release. So you have one over here, and you have an identical one over here. And either one works just as well. And we are unloaded. Now, the next thing I want to point out is that their FMPs come with two different magazines, typically. There is a third one, which the only reason you would get it is if you live in California or New York, that pretty much has a, um, a pin up here that limits the magazine to 10 rounds. These are not neutered magazines, so these are the two more common ones. And pretty much, if you, you go online to buy them, you're going to get this one with a nice little rounded bottom on it. If you, when you buy the gun, some of them come with this one. Uh, basically, the difference between the two is the base plate. And you can see here that one has a rounded base plate and one has a flat base, uh, base plate. And pretty much the difference between these two magazines is that one holds 14 rounds and one holds 15. You can see another slight difference in them is with the sighting holes. Let me bring this up close. And... There we go. On the one with the rounded bottom, the bottom sighting hole will say 15. And the one with the flat bottom will say 14. So if you ever took a bunch of these apart and you're trying to figure out which ones go on which, that's a real easy way to tell. Now there is an aftermarket modification you can get for these magazines that basically just changes your base plate and has it extend down to about here and it holds another three rounds. However, that part costs something in the neighborhood of thirty dollars plus shipping well for ten more dollars ten or fifteen more dollars you can get a whole another fifteen rounds so I never went with the base with the uh, base plate mod I decided it was better just to buy more magazines I'm not going to take the uh, magazines apart I may change my mind uh, later but pretty much the magazines come apart pretty similar to how my uh, Keltex come apart um, they do have a very nice feel to them. Uh, it's, it's they're a coated. I think they're coated in something, but they're pretty much they're stainless steel uh, is the important part here. They're stainless steel, uh, but they're not sh uh, um, the silvery shiny color which I like. And they have a very high quality feel to them. They have very nice smooth rounded edges, and they simply just feel quality. Now then, moving on to the, the disassembly of the FMP itself. Now, unlike the uh, uh, the Keltec, which you had to get another tool in order to take it apart, this comes apart without any tools whatsoever. Uh, the first step is the same. You're going to pull back on the slide, push up on the slide release, which on the slide uh, retention, which is also your slide release. So push up on that, lock the slide back. This is the takedown lever. Simply flip it forward. Now holding the back of the uh, of the slide, release the slide, and allow it to come off. And you don't have any of that weird 
throwing the barrel forward in order to get it to line up right to come off. Now internally, it's very similar to the Caltech once again because it's a very simple design. The spring comes off there and the barrel comes out as such. Now a note on this which also makes this much more enjoyable to put together is that it has a caged spring. So the spring on its guide rod here is caged at the very end and this means that the spring will never extend past that point. So you're not trying to hold back the spring while lining up the guide rod's end with the hole in the slide. And this makes it wildly easier to put this back together. The barrel is a rather simple design, no extra uh, machining on it than what's absolutely necessary. And it locks up the exact same way as most other square bodied uh, semi-automatic pistols. And once again, when the barrel is inserted, straight, there we go. It's a little bit hard to do this at an angle while looking at a screen at the same time. And since this is larger, I can better show how that locks into there. So you see right here, when the gun fires or you pull back on the slide, first, this drops down. Yeah, let me see if I can angle that better for you. Yeah, that'll have to do. And then the slide slides back over it. After going through its cycle, it comes forward and the chamber slides back up into place. And that just goes in like such. So as you can see, there's no struggling with it whatsoever. This is hammer fired. And the hammer will strike on the back of the pin here. And you can see it's already filled up with oil and not really any dust because pretty much I haven't carried this in a few weeks since I last cleaned it. So it's pretty much just oil. Um, anyway, moving on. Now here... As you can see, we have the hammer here, and we have the extractor over here. And one thing that you don't want to do is you don't want to open the, uh, the slide, manually feed a single round in, and then slam the slide forward. Get the spring off here. And the reason is the extractor on the side here, let's get you into view. Come on, focus. Right here sits behind, if I can get to go, there we go, right behind the round right there. So what happens is when this naturally pulls the, the round from the magazine, it'll slide it up nicely behind that. But if you manually insert the round, the round is now sitting in front of this. And if you're lucky, it'll manage to somehow to still get behind that, and it may not. And one of two things can happen. Well, three. One, nothing. Uh, two, if, if this does not if it find its way behind the, uh, the casing, the casing may not actually come back out. Because this is going to extract it from the, uh, uh, from the firearm. And I actually I called this incorrectly on here it, this is be the ejector assuming I'm remembering how this thing works properly anyway so pretty much manually putting the round in the chamber can leave the round in the chamber well the, uh, the, the spent casing in which case now your gun doesn't work properly so you always want to load the gun with the magazines only rather than manually let's go ahead and put this back together There we go. Now on the FMP45, what they use is these rails here. It's the slides only sliding on these rails in the front and in the back. And as I understand, the rails on this gun are replaceable. So you can take this to a gunsmith and have the gunsmith replace your rails for you. Now, there are a few extra controls on this over 
the uh, the uh, the Caltech. The first uh, control that's different is our takedown lever, which is not ambidextrous, but that's not a, a huge issue. You're not normally doing a tactical takedown of your gun in the middle of a uh, of a fight, and if you are, uh, something seriously wrong happened. The other control that's different is this does have a manual safety. Down is fire, up is safe, simple enough. It is ambidextrous. But your safety is also your decocker. So if you go down and you pull it down one more time and it stops the hammer at half cock. Now a nice thing about this particular setup here over some other gun, uh, gun styles that use a separate decocker from the safety is there's fewer controls to remember where they are. In this gun you only have to really, really remember your magazine release, your trigger, and your safety and decocker. It also means you can do the motion much quicker. So, if you're already cocked and you're safe, for instance, you're loading the gun and then you're going to put it in your holster and you carry it unsafe but decocked, you can put the magazine in, let the slide go, and then in one motion, decock it and take it off safe. Now, the difference between firing and decocked is that when it decocks, it gets caught back here versus when it fires. So you can see what happens is when you pull on the decocker, and if it'll, once again, if I'll focus, there's two, there's two levers in there. And when I'm pulling down on the decocker, you can see it's moving just the one. And what that does is it leaves the other one the catch on this little notch on the hammer and that prevents the hammer from falling all the way forward and actually in the decocked position in the uh, in the half cock position the uh, you'd actually have to bend the hammer in order for the hammer to strike the pin now when you pull the trigger it moves both arms at once this allows the hammer to fall all the way down and hit the back. Now there is another way to decock this gun other than the decocker and that is if you want to go completely decocked where the hammer is resting all the way in its at rest position here you have it cocked you put your thumb on the back of it and you pull the trigger with the safety off otherwise it won't come forward and there you go. Now to put this back together you pull back on the hammer, if assuming that you would release the hammer at some point during the cleaning. You're now going to take your slide, take the lower, mate them together. And you could do this with the hammer up, however, this means you're not fighting the hammer spring. Once it's back together, you lock it, which actually I did there almost without thinking because I've done this so many times. Flip forward your uh, your retain your uh, takedown lever and let it go. And now you're pretty much done putting it together. A few other notes on this is the serial number for these particular guns is on the rail. So when you put a uh, an attachment on your gun, you're not going to be able to see it anymore. So the recommendation I would have is if you uh, keep a record of all of your uh, of all your weapons and their serial numbers, which is a very good idea to do. Uh, you ideally want to do that before anything gets stolen. Um, you'll want to do that right away before you put anything on this. Otherwise, you put your stuff on, get it all nice and sighted, especially if you have like a laser, like I have on here, and um, then you uh, realize you have to take everything back off again in order to do it, uh, in order to get the number. Now, some lights, it's not too big of a deal to take them off because they have a little paddle and you simply pull that down slide it off this does not this has a um, an allen key for that I had one with a paddle and unfortunately it eventually broke on me so uh, I had to get this one this one was a cheap one just uh, pretty much because I, I needed a light on my gun period and cheap was better than no because uh, where uh, where I sleep the light switch is not up here with me so the lights I get right away are the ones on my gun so that there is pretty much your FMP45.
Now then, I changed my mind. I will disassemble one of my magazines. So we'll take the 15 round magazine. And this is the most common that you're going to get. Like I said, sometimes you will get these. And step one is you take all 15 rounds out. Now then, there's a retainer on these here, and on this particular gun I have not removed that retainer, and considering these magazines are in the neighborhood of $45 a piece, I'm not very inclined to go about modifying my magazines, and hoping that they'll still work after I modify them. Push that down, and I don't usually have to take these apart, because since I don't keep these in my pocket, they do not... Um, they do not get near as dirty as my Keltex magazines. Pocket carry is the hardest thing for your gun, uh, at least that I've found. I, mean, I guess you could leave your gun in a swamp or whatnot. Now on these, these are angled as such, and you'll notice there is nothing retaining it to the magazine itself. The spring comes out, and the spring can only go in one way. Uh, whereas the Keltex, you could decide which side one, one you want to go. On these, you cannot. And the reason for that is, the yellow section up here is much narrower than the section down here that covers in the main body of the spring. And that's basically pretty much because of how it needs to be able to feed up into here. The followers are a simple piece of plastic. And really nothing too spectacular about any of them. So we'll go ahead and put this magazine back together. Oops, I'm back. Uh, that goes as such. And you go as such here. And you do just simply balance this right on top. Slide the whole conglomerate inside. Turn the magazine upside down. Put your retainer on. Try to convince the whole thing that, yes, you really want to go down into the gun. I'm going to have to hold this closer to me, so give me a moment. There we go. And after some convincing, the retainer is sitting down as such. And once again, you hold it down. The base plates ride on these little rails inside there, which ride on these little lips on the magazine. Focus. There we go. You have to push it down over the first lip. And then it snaps in place. And ba pretty much all that retainer does is uses the spring pressure to keep this base plate from coming off. Now, of course, you add in all the ammunition. And the reason I had to count the other ones was I had two magazines all in one pile. But since I don't have two magazines in one pile, I can go ahead and just simply put these in blindly because I know there is 15 of them. Plus one, because there's still the one in this pile that was in the gun. An interesting note on this was uh, one of my coworkers when he saw that when I was showing him my ammunition was like oh you know was telling me oh well you better make sure you don't get caught with this and I was like well what do you mean and he was like well you, you know they're hollow points you're not allowed to have this well that depends on what state you're in and uh, if you live in one of the uh, People's Republic states then yes that may be the case in my state hollow point is just fine to have. Now then, loading the gun is very simple. Magazine in the gun. And an interesting note I discovered with this, and I've not tested other ones. I don't know if this is unique to this one. Hang on a second. When the slide is held back, you take the magazine and you slam it home. It will automatically throw the slide forward for you so you don't have to. Pull the magazine out. Top off your round. And there we go.